You're the best looking guy here. Okay, we need to talk about PS1 characters' faces because this cannot be the best looking guy right here. Who else do we got? I've been playing Mega Man Legends lately and this game looks so good. Apart from the texture warping, the visuals still holds up to this day and it's not just the art style that sure plays a big part of why it has aged so well, but the best thing about Legends graphics is that they managed to have some really expressive characters in the cutscenes in an era where most of the human characters in games didn't have faces at all. The series work with the limitations of the hardware pretty well. The facial expressions are simply texture changes. And they do some really clever stuff like they have specific textures for specific angles. This texture right here, for example, have a transparent gap in the mouth because in-game it's used when the character is viewed on a side profile. That is some smart stuff. Today you have a lot of good looking games that replicate the low poly PS1 style with great facial animations, but it got me thinking. Was Mega Man Legends and its sequels really that far ahead of its time, or we did in fact have other PS1 games with expressive facial animations? Because yeah, sure, don't get me wrong, we did have some good looking PS1 games, but a lot of them were really lacking in the facial department. Alright then, so games with a more cartoonish approach look pretty good for most of the time, it's kinda easier when you're not trying to compete with reality, that's pretty much why stylized games always tend to age better than realistic looking ones. The original Crash Bandicoot trilogy in particular have some great expressive animations, these characters have so much personality, especially Crash itself. I mean look at this guy, he's so yeah. silly. This face that he does before riding the hog gets me every time. Like. Why are you looking at me like this? Bugs Bunny Lost in Time have some great expressive animations too. They are very faithful to the cartoons and the characters even blink. Look at that. However, this does not mean that cartoon game equals good faces. Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue is a great game. It is a childhood favorite of mine and everyone agrees that is one of the best licensed games ever made. But the faces of the characters here are just not it. I mean, look at them. Although we are not trying to compete with reality here, we can't hold ourselves to compare the game with the movies. And boy, it took a while until we were able to have some pixel looking graphics in video games. This was not the time. So in order to find some more expressive looking PS1 games, I had to do some research and I actually found some really cool stuff. Four out of five of the games that we'll talk about can be labeled in the same category, that is low poly PS1 anime. And what about the fifth one? Well, let's leave that as a surprise for now. Starting with a literal low poly PS1 anime game, it's Doctor Slump. It is based on a popular 80s series of the same name made by Akira Toriyama, who you may know from a lot of famous stuff both in anime and video games. It is a Japan exclusive game, but fortunately, an unofficial English translation was made in 2021 by Hilltop. Here, the Doctor Slump Senbei is an inventor who, in the middle of a storm, creates our main character, a rally. And I mean, just look at this game, this game is adorable! The game is divided into action stages, which are standard 3D platform levels, and slice of life parts where you wander around the map talking with the characters and doing some fetch quests. And both of them are actually pretty fun to play. The anime style is perfectly conveyed in the PS1's polygonal graphics, and just look at the faces, we got so many different expressions! And one thing that sells the expressiveness even more is that the game is also pretty funny and charming. Much of the game's humor comes from a rally being oblivious to the real world. Okay, we're taking a bath with the teacher. What? You took a bath with Miss Midori? Yep. Jeez, I wish I could have come too. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? You, you use the Pong Poco Transformer on Miss Midori, you brat. I'll punish you for humiliating her like that. Eh, then you can be a frog. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. 
it is one thing to carry them, but you gotta to smoke them too. Here, let me try one. Oh, wait, wait, what? Is that... Wait! <laughs> okay, I just gave a little girl a cigarette. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Time for a tactical retreat. Take us away. <laughs> just left in there. <laughs> no, don't leave me here. <laughs> and there's this weird thing that she likes to touch poop. Like poop is an actual collectible in the game that fills your happiness gauge. And yeah, it's pink and cutely drawn, but it is feces, and when you collect them near other people, they naturally react with disgust. What the heck are you doing? Did you seriously just poke that thing? Yeah, I actually like to poke them. This is madness, I think she might be enjoying this. <laughs> yep. There's a character from the anime called Poop Boy, who is like a, a pink pile of shit. And, and he was actually used as inspiration for Google's first pile of feces emoji. So that's some great cultural impact from Dr. Slump right there. That's what you get when you try to mess with me! This one is not based on an anime like Dr. Slump, but this game has so much Saturday morning cartoon vibes. Brave Fencer Musashi is an action RPG by Squaresoft. You follow Musashi, a swordsman who was summoned by the princess of a kingdom who was under attack. And you're obliged to help them because if not, you cannot return to your own world. The graphics aren't near as visually pleasing as Dr. Slump, but they have their own charm. We can see a little bit of facial animations in the cutscenes, like I can see some expressions changing. But the best part is in the gameplay, where we can see our tiny swordsman here react to the world around him. Like, bro is terrified, and the guns running away with him is a nice touch too. The great thing about this one is that it actually has some voice acting, and it is so cheesy, but I love it. Who did you say was puny? And why are you guys wearing such stupid costumes? Stupid costumes? Take that back, you... you little turd! Did, did she just call Please, me a turd? Princess, so little turd. So so little turd. <laughs> However, we can't call all of the characters in Brave Fencer Musashi expressive because this guy right here has the funniest character model I've ever seen. My man is literally a triangle. Gonna be honest, I do not have much to say about Ape Escape. It is a game where an emo monkey gains intelligence and he turns evil and then he sends monkeys back in time to rewrite history so that the monkeys can become the, the dominant species. And I mean, I get it, sometimes I wish we could return to monkey as well, but, but yeah, the apes have escaped and we have to collect them with a net. And once again, we're looking at a game with a low-poly PS1 anime style, which looks great and it's pretty cute. However, the way that they animated the professor talking, it's so funny. I mean, at least I thought it was really funny. They basically just move his mustache, which is a block by the way, up and down while he talks. And I don't know why, but that made me laugh every time he spoke something. Check it out! This is the water net. Use it when you're underwater. I equipped it with oxygen. Bro, this mustache again. So yeah, I had to include a section about Ape Escape just for this, and it probably was not worth it. But moving on. Okay, so Incredible Crisis is in every single list of weird PlayStation One games or weird Japanese games. And reasonably so. This game's pretty weird. The plot revolves around a Japanese family where it is Grandmother Hatsu's birthday, and she asks for everyone to come home earlier to celebrate with her. And then everything goes crazy, and you have to play a bunch of minigames with all of the family members in their quest back home. 
like Taneo here for example, he started by doing some sick moves in a dance exercise, but then a giant ball crashes into the office, he runs away, gets to the elevator, but then the ball falls on the top of the elevator and it blows up. Taneo then falls off the window but somehow manages to land on his feet, but then another thing falls on his head and now he's in an ambulance, and after answering some trivia questions, the medics throw him out of the moving ambulance into the streets. He then again somehow manages to survive and meets the lady in red that was at the office and he gets kind of flirty with her like come on dude why are you smiling like that you have a wife and kids Taneo sucks man but yeah you now have to play a really uncomfortable minigame where he gives the lady a massage in the ferris wheel Ooh, just a tiny bit Ooh, just a tiny bit Ooh, just a tiny bit mm, there Unfortunately for us, the cheating stops at the massage because the lady jumps out of the ferris wheel and throws a bomb at him. And I gotta say, he totally deserves it. He survives once again, landing in the water, and while he gets up, there's a giant spaceship under attack by military jets, and his daughter calls him and asks him to defend the mothership, and now we are shooting the jets, and... <laughs> And well, you get the idea, right? The game is silly. And what enhances the silliness by a lot is this game's graphics and presentation, and especially the facial animations. All of the family members have so much personality and their faces matches the craziness that is happening on the screen. <laughs> Alright, so our final game, unlike the others, is not a cute and funny low-poly PS1 anime. And I kinda saved the best for last. What the? Oh shit! I never heard of Fear Effect before doing research for this video, but man, these games look so insanely ahead of their time. By just taking a quick look at the gameplay, you might think that this is just a Resident Evil clone. But you couldn't be more wrong. Look at this game's graphics. This game looks so good, it has the best human facial animations in this console. Like the eyes, the mouth, the eyebrows, they all move accordingly. Look at all of the different expressions that these characters are emoting, accompanied by some decent voice acting. So. Were you both in? Getting hold of Weeming first may be the only way we get out of China alive. Uh, look, Glass, I signed on this gig for one reason, right? The money. We'll still get it. But Weeming is our bargaining chip with Mr. Lamb and the Triad for our lives now. That means we find her first, find her fast, and drop anyone who tries to stop us. And it is a complete package because... We also got some really cool cinematography with dynamic camera work and even some same Raimi like transitions. For the backgrounds, instead of going for pre-rendered images like Resident Evil and other games of this era did, it uses full motion looping videos, making them look a lot more dynamic. This also increases the file sizes by a ton, making the game have to be composed in four different discs. But yeah, the visuals manage to look this good by having the character models and backgrounds be able to smoothly transition between pre-rendered cutscenes and real-time gameplay. Set in the future, in the year of 2050, you play as a trio of mercenaries, Hannah, Glass and Dick who are looking for the daughter of a triad boss that disappeared. And then a series of really unfortunate events happens. It feels like we're playing a bad 80s slash 90s action flick, and I say that in the best possible way. This story goes to so many places, there's some mafia stuff going on, there's zombies, demons, some time travel, you literally go to hell at some point. 
And like 80s movies, there's even some questionable fun service scenes. You're gonna wear that? Why don't you just walk in there naked? Don't be silly. I'd only be able to hide one gun if I were naked. There's one that actually makes sense in the context of the story. It is when Hannah is taking a bath at uh, a boat and they, they suddenly arrive at a haunted island and have to quickly leave. So yeah, it kinda makes sense that she's just wearing a towel for this section. And there's an actual payoff, because later when she's about to be captured by a guard, she removes her towel and the guard gets distracted because, oh my god, it's a naked woman! And you actually have to remove the towel in-game, like you have to interact with the item in your inventory, so, so yeah, that works, it's, it's kind of funny. But others are more questionable. In the sequel, there's a new female character that gets captured and she's put on a weird torture device that is... Why are you doing this game? Just... Just why, bro? Unfortunately, a third fear effect that was supposed to come out for the PlayStation 2 was cancelled and recently a remake of the first game was announced but that was also cancelled. Which really sucks because I truly enjoyed these characters in the setting and I would like to see more of them. There is a third game that launched but it was a crowdfunding isometric strategy game but apparently it is kinda bad so I didn't bother to check. So I'm really happy to say that we did in fact had other PS Plus games with expressive facial animations. And I really love to talk about old games like this. Today, most of the AAA industry are really focused on developing hyper-realistic looking graphics with ray tracing and all of the other fancy graphic stuff. There's people that get mad about reflections in puddles of water. And don't get me wrong, I like some fancy graphics too. But to go back in time and be generally surprised by the little things like characters having mouths that move when they talk and eyes that actually blink and facial expressions that change are still stuff that is very amusing to me. 